You're wondering if you're a great parent or if you're trying to be a perfect parent or even wish that you could be a better parent, then today's video is for you. I'm going to get into inner child healing and how that has affected me as a parent and how I was determined as a parent to do better than I received when I was younger. No shade to my parents in that way, but if you think this is something that's going to resonate with you, be sure to watch this video, but also like it, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you're notified when I post new content. For those of you who are new here, I must say, welcome. It's great to have you. I am Adriana and I am a life coach and I help women who struggle with their self-worth be able to reframe their mind and see themselves worthy in every area of their life. So if you also think that will be something you'd be interested in, Go ahead and like this like this video and subscribe to the channel because as a life coach, though my sessions with my clients are a lot different, this allows you guys to see another side of me, the side of me that I don't necessarily bring to a coaching session because the goal is to help you as my clients be able to work through whatever it is and reach your goal. So this just allows you to see the things that me as a life coach have had to endure and how I've even reframed my mindset so you guys know that I'm relatable and that it's possible. All right, so let's get into today's video. Before I became a mom, I had decided, which is important, that I was going to be the best mom for my children. Not a perfect mom because they don't exist, but the best mom I could. I knew that I wanted to make sure that I gave my children the things that I didn't receive when I was younger. And this is even before I really understood inner child healing. And I'm so grateful that I decided to do that because inner child healing, I've been able to weave right into becoming a better mom. Now, I have struggled with trauma. And just in case you're wondering what trauma, what is that? Trauma oftentimes and what normally it is, is too much, too fast, too soon. It doesn't mean that you're physically abused as far as like sexually abused, but sometimes spankings can still be too much, too fast, too soon. So I was disciplined that way. And I also, at the age of four or five, was told that my parents were separating and it was a conversation that I had with my family and then office and my parents were not present. They were gone doing their life and trying to figure things out. But at that time, at that age of four or five, too much, too fast, too soon. I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't understand why they weren't present. I didn't understand what divorce was. I didn't understand how long they were going to be gone. So I realized that I didn't want to provide that same type of upbringing for my children. And I had to forgive myself, which is very important without blaming myself, that I had a son I want to say out of wedlock because I feel like that's a very religious word, but I had my son and I wasn't married to his father and I hated the fact that we didn't work out in the sense of having to have a divided home because I knew with my parents separating and dividing that I also had some more trauma because I'm wondering what happened, am I the cause of it? So part of me was feeling really, really bad that that happened, but I forgave myself and I also, because of that, realized that I want to make sure that through this process, as long as it takes, I'm going to sit there and have as many conversations as I need to with my son about anything he wonders because he may wonder, why did you guys separate? Was it because of me? You guys didn't like each other? I don't understand. So there's some of those questions that we've had or conversations that we've had several times over and I've been there for it because I understand how important it is for him to work through his emotions. I also understand that he was only seven or eight at the time, and that was too much for him to understand. And so I'm making sure that I'm having conversations, that I, he has a space to communicate how he feels. I don't want him to ever feel that he's bothering me, that I'm going to be annoyed, that you know he doesn't feel loved. And I just constantly try to explain to him, this is what happens with sometimes, and it's unfortunate. And you know, there's a way that you can love with you know, love a, a person and your parents don't have to be together. So I just try to make sure that I am present and I'm attentive with him. And I will talk to him from eight o'clock in the morning until one o'clock at night. If I, I'm sorry, not one o'clock at night, but one o'clock in the morning, if I needed to, in order for him to understand how much he's loved, that he doesn't ever have to worry about any of that. Because I know sometimes with that parents leaving and, you know, not being in one house, you definitely struggle with feeling if you're worthy, 
who struggle with abandonment and you I don't want him to have that I know he probably would have that just because he's too young to understand everything but my goal is to be able to help him through that and the more he grows older he can begin to see so that has been my goal as a parent and I know for my daughter who is much younger for her I'm trying to be more you know patient with her we're very similar we're both Sagittarius's and so I know she does certain things she can be very stubborn she can be very you know loud as she should be but I know I'm going to also have to tweak my parenting for her because I was once my son and can relate how he felt but I was also my daughter in the sense of just being young and just being you know adventurous and wanting to see different things and one thing I appreciate right now is that my daughter does have her father and every time I see her and her dad together it just it warms my heart because I know that's what she needs and I'm so excited that he's in a space to provide her what she needs now I want to tell you guys something that hopefully this is something that does help you guys and you know kind of give you a little bit of okay I ain't doing so bad <laughs> like I stated in the beginning of the video there's no perfect parent all you can do is be the best parent that you are for your, for your children and I know oftentimes as parents who have trauma and inner child wounds it is very hard to be able to parent and love and give from from a wounded point of view so I would encourage you guys to look into inner child healing it doesn't have to be this massive thing a lot of times people are like how do I do that it feels a little bit wacky because basically what you're doing is you're talking to your subconscious and the the smaller version of yourself that didn't get the love and the attention and the nurturing that every child yearns for and you can go ahead and tell that younger version of yourself hey you're okay. You're safe now. I'm here for you. I love you. What do you need? And sometimes people are like, what? Does that really work? And it absolutely does. And you can just begin to soften your inner child and be able to heal the inner child, what ends up healing that emotion. And then you're going to be able to reparent yourself. So your parents can't go back and change it. Like life has already moved on, but you know what you need. So you're able to give yourself the right words and encouragement. And even sometimes just sit there and hug yourself. I was doing that the other day because there's different layers to, to trauma and healing. So I'm still evolving and I'm still growing and I'm doing all of that. I was doing breath work, which helps as well to release a lot of that trauma and bottled up and repressed emotion so if you learn to reparent yourself and you can do it by yourself you don't have to go through to a pair uh, to a therapist but you know therapists are available or even life coaches are available to help you through that if you have a plan and you're just not you're like i want to change and i want to move forward i just need some guidance and support to help me become the better parent that i need to be i need my my mind frame to be reframed and i want to finally get it so I would encourage you to do that. There's plenty of videos, meditations to get there. So I don't want to tell you this is how you have to do it, but you have to see what method resonates with you. Some people are fine with breath work. You know, they do like a, a lot of somatic and soma meets body, a lot of body work to be able to release some trauma and they're able to be better parents. But also understanding that there's no perfect parent, right? So I realized that I had to look at each one of my children as the individual. And I also have had to watch and make sure that I'm not putting too much of what I needed on my children. Every child needs to be nurtured, loved, feel safe and seen. But as regards to other stuff that they need, I don't want to overdo it because then I am going to create a child wound that, that doesn't necessarily have to be there because instead of hearing them completely out, I only, only want to focus on a certain point or certain areas of their life. So I have to see my daughter as some as an individual. I have to see my son as an individual. They have two different personalities and they just have different things that were inherited from them. So I can't treat them the same. My son is more sensitive. My daughter is more like, you know, her masculine energy is a little strong. <laughs> so I can't really talk to them in the same way. Okay. This is another, this is another, this is another subject we're going to get into that may be a little bit touchy, but this is something that I think is important for me to share. Again, this is my experience and my point of view. You don't have to agree. I'm not judging any parent because you get to parent your own children. But I got to a place more recently where I was able to just see understanding trauma as well. It wasn't until I understood really trauma as in a bigger picture that this is creating trauma in my children's life and I didn't 
I didn't think I was, but once I grabbed hold of this concept, I literally, tears were just streaming down my face. And I already started to feel, and I couldn't put my finger on it, the concept of spanking. Now, as your child, nobody likes to get spanked. You're like, well, nobody likes to get spanked. And then you get older and think, oh, but you become a parent and you say, I never spanked my children. And then you end up doing it. And I personally do not think that parents realize how much spanking isn't as beneficial. Now in that moment, they're quiet and they may do whatever they want, but I feel like number one, they're encouraging fear. You're gonna fear me, you're gonna fear this. And you you know, it just is not a really good thing. Of course, you want your children to grow up with having boundaries and understanding, you know, can't break the law. I understand that, but beating them into submission and fear ends up causing trauma and ends up backfiring in the long run. And I know this because out of all my siblings, the one who got the most spankings was the one who got in trouble and is constantly getting in trouble. The couple spankings that I got still wasn't really good. And the ones who really didn't get nothing, they're even better than me and the one who, who got spankings. And I know that parenting can be a lot and it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of energy. But I always tell people parenting is not for the weak. Intentional parenting is not for the weak. Not the parents who just put their kids in front of the TV and the television and all these electronics, but the parents who want to make sure that they are going to give their children the best life possible. There is a lot that comes with it. A lot of hours, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of talking, a lot of crying, a lot of, you know, frustration is there. But I think in the long run, it's beneficial. I think as a parent, you know, who spanks their child, you're teaching your child that, hey, I love you, but I'm going to spank you and hurt you, but you're going to be okay in the end because I really do love you. And a lot of times parents don't always spank under control or they're saying all this stuff as they're spanking. And then a child is supposed to understand how this works. Now, when you're older, you understand the, the idea behind spanking, but at that younger age, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So you don't understand you're trying to protect me. I don't understand how you still love me if you're making me cry. And you know, it's just too much, too fast, too soon. And so I know for me, the reason I did it was because I grew up in Christianity and you know, you spare the rod, you spoil the child. So that was just the thing. You just spanked the butt and that was fine. The kids will get over it. And I realized that I had to forgive myself because I didn't know. And I wasn't trying to like make my son pay or anything, but I was like, well, the Bible says it, God says it. I don't want to upset Jesus. Uh, I ain't trying to go to hell. So let me spank my child or my son. And it just broke my heart. He would literally almost turn into the hawk. And he was so frustrated. He would take all his stuff off the bed. And it was just like, this can't, this can't be the only way. And I realized it's not the only way. I, there's other ways I can raise my son and teach him and allow him to have a better life without having to just kind of make my life convenient in that moment. Spank you, make you fearful, make you be quiet. Let me just get you to 18 till you get out of my house. No, let me go ahead and make sure I'm intentionally parenting you and explaining stuff for you because he said something. He said something, a two, I think a week or two ago. And he, and this is not, it wasn't a response to something I did, but he said, you know, mom, I didn't ask to be here. And I'm like, whoa, you're right. You didn't ask to be here. And our kids don't ask to be here. And we didn't ask to be here, but we're a product of a little nastiness going on. I'm just kidding. But a product of two people coming together and doing that process. But it's like, why are we beating and abusing and causing these traumas to these children who didn't ask to be here? They just are the result of something that you did. And I'm like, when he said that, that really hit home for me. And I'm like, wow, that really, that really is something. And so I told him the other day, you know, I was like, please give mommy, you know, grace. I'm trying the best I can to be a mom. I said, there's so much that I'm learning. There's so much that I'm unlearning and I'm trying to become a better person. And you know, it, it's not always easy. I'm like, they didn't give us, there's not a book you can go to the store or Amazon or to the library that tells you exactly how to be the perfect parent. I said, because every child is different. So just forgive me, you know, for everything that I've done that made you feel unsafe, that have made you feel, you know, that you weren't heard or seen because I love you. I see you. I'm here for you. I care for you just as I would say to my younger child and so that has been the space that I am with my children and I know they're not going to get out of here unscathed because I can't be with them 24 7 but I know that I'm able to 
pour into them and give them a better a better upbringing than I had. And if I can break the cycle with the spanking and the trauma, then I know when my children have their children, they're going to not even think twice about spanking their children. They're going to be like, my mom did this. She provided comfort. She told me I was okay. I could cry to her. She'll be there for me no matter what. I can count on her. And that's what I want my children to be for their children. So when you talk about breaking cycles, that's a cycle that's worth breaking. So... I hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments how you guys feel about the trauma thing and didn't realize you were going through trauma by getting spanked. Let me also know if you um, are doing inner child healing. If you want to connect, I'm going to put my handle down like I always do. And like I said, I am a, a coach. So if you guys are interested in any coaching, again, it is a lot different than how I'm doing my videos. This is just me expressing my side of things and being able to, I've been able to be, in, I have been working on myself and so far so good i've been able to heal myself i've been able to hug on my inner child and i sometimes just sit there and just say i love you it's so beautiful i see you and i don't care because that's what my child need. that's what my inner child needs to heal and i see how much it's helping it sounds crazy but until you do it you will not see how much it helps I'm going to leave you with this final exercise or thing to try. And I would love to know. So if you do it, come back and comment on this video. But one thing that may help you when it comes to parenting, you get all frustrated and you're so used to telling your kids, go sit down, go in your room, just leave me alone. And then you just naturally pick up your phone and you start texting or get on Instagram or social media. Put a picture of your, your your younger self. So whether it's when you're a baby or even when you're like a toddler, I'm sure if you don't have one, just ask your parents for one and you don't got to tell them what you're doing and put that as your screensaver. So once you're done reprimanding your children or doing what you normally do, your trigger when you tell them to go ahead and you pick up your phone, you're going to be faced with that inner child and it's going to immediately make you go, oh, I'm doing it again. And you have the ability to correct yourself. And the more and quicker you see yourself and correct yourself, the quicker it's going to be. So I would say give yourself grace during this process and give yourself time to heal. You cannot put a timing on your healing because sometimes with your healing, you realize there's different layers to your trauma. Okay, so I hope this video was more than helpful. I thank you guys for your time and your views. And I will see you in the next video. Love and light.